Now, this is uh, the fly I'm going to be tying. Basically what this is, uh, I, I get asked a lot if I could tie an indicator style fly. Uh, this is a one that I, I tie, it's a simple thing. It's basically tied on a jig hook, which is unusual. But if you look, if this is tied, I'll give you an idea of what I do. Piggyback, uh, you tie a piece of nylon to the bend of the hook. It's basically called piggyback. And you basically tie an island to there and you need a small nymph, maybe two feet or so, or less, whatever, uh, hanging behind this fly, I was using this as the indicator. Having a, like a pink and white, uh, especially yesterday when I was using it, I could see it when I was casting under the trees, I could see it, it was really easy to see. And most of the fish I've been catching in the rough water there is, and there's not much of it, and we've had very little rain this year. So we've got, we're using methods that we don't really favour, but uh, if it wasn't for this and my old eyesight, I wouldn't be able to see the takes. But I was ca catching on this as much as I was the, the nymph, so they both were working. And if you don't like the antron, uh, like in this one here, uh, you could use like a, in this case a CDC, this is just a lighter coloured version, which it works. Um, as I say, they're not the prettiest looking thing, but it's a, it's, it's a method for catching when things are quite tough going. Now, the hook I'm using is this. This is the fulling mill, it's called the Jig Force. In this case it's a size 16. And it's more like a 14 than a 16. Uh, it's quite big. Um, some modern sizes, then it's obviously not meant for tying dry flies. So anyway, just tie it in as normal, or put it on as normal. Now, there's a couple of patterns I could tie. Uh, I'll just tie the one with the silver rib. Uh, that was the one that fished best yesterday. So, thread. I'm going to use the AO and Uni. Just going to wax it first. And black, obviously. Now, what I do is just simply start at the eye and you put down a layer of thread. I like to come along to the point of the hook. Come back up, stop just at the elbow, just before the bend. Now I've got some, just a white poly, poly yarn, uh, pink antron, it's a blend. Just, you can mix them up if you wish. But having one white, one black, so, so you can, or one white and one pink, so you can see it. Uh, so basically, you're looking for a length around about the shank at least, tied on top. Nice and tight, make sure it's secure. Now you come over the back here and cut a, it's basically a straight cut on top, which will give you a tapered cut. Again, you wax your thread and then basically just keep your fingers on the cut end and wind the thread down. This will stop them rotating, just hold them for that second and take your finger back as you go. And then and this is optional if you want a rib or not. The, I like the rib on it, it basically works. So this is a silver tinsel rib. Just going to catch this on the way down. Just run, it's easier to tie it in the way down. Just to the point where before it starts to get around the bend. And then come back up maybe a couple of mil or so. And then we, any dubbing, any sort of light dubbing or not. I like an actual dubbing so I've got some this is a blend of some of the CDC fibres that was left of uh, two or three feathers and some rabbit. Just blend it together. Slightly dub it on. And then just work your way up. Quite rough, just a wee drop more there just to tide it. And you back a couple of turns. Don't be shut, I mean if the thread shows through, don't worry, that's fine. And then what I like to do is a couple of turns or so with the tinsel at the back and then rub through about three or four turns or so two or three turns to hold just check just where it locks on my thread now the body I'm just going to trim it a wee bit a nice shape. 
be careful with your hand, try and there, I just cut a wee bit away, so just watch it when you're doing that. A couple of wee spikes there, so I'm going to have to trim them out. Not make much difference, but for me it does, I just trim them away. Now I've got a natural dun or grey hackle, which I've been tying that last fly with, I've still got plenty left. These are the dry fly hackles uh, from a whiting. Let's catch, catch it on. Wind it right up to the, the antron. Just encourage, you need but plenty of hackle in, don't be shy. Just tighten the thread up, just basically the point where it's just at the bend, and then we just wind the hackle. Just wind your way up. Nice and tight. There you go. I'm just going to stroke everything back. Then I just I usually just use my nail to hold the hackle so I can bring the thread up nice and tight. Secure it in. Trim away the hackle. You will catch the odd fibre. You will get a few, so don't worry. Just you can take your time and take these out. I'm just going to leave the thread in front. So basically all I'm going to do is take the thread to the eye, come back up, and put finish. Trim away your thread. Well everything's back at this point, give a wee bit of varnish. Varnish the head. It's not the prettiest fly in the world. Still catchy as well, this, so it's amazing how many fish take it. Uh, you can see it though, yeah, this really shows up. And you can trim the, the length of the post, or the, I'll just show you what it should look like. So basically it'll lie, it'll sit in the water like a parachute, just like this. And uh, basically you can piggyback, as you say, tie an island off the bend. Your leaders to the, the eye. Just make sure you put plenty of floating on and it'll sit there all day. It just goes on and on and on. It's a rough and ready fly. Just bring these fibers back up after pressing them down. And there we go. It's a simple way and it's a good way. Jig hooks, a good style. Just put your leader in the right position in the bend. So. As I say, you could use the, the CDC version uh, that if you don't like using the Antron, it's obviously cheaper to use the Antron. It works just the same as about CDC. Uh, you could have uh, white, black's good times, depending on the, where you're casting. You can actually see black quite well. Orange, well, pink and white's great. You can see it a mile away. Uh, and there you go. And that's your, your indicator fly. Tied in the jig hook. Uh, it's really simple, you can really tie up a few. I've tied up a few already um, just to make sure I'm geared up next time. So, but hopefully, we get some water and we get straight on to the dry, the dry fly before the end of the season. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And that's uh, the jig uh, high vis, as we call it, the uh, indicator. And a good fish and fly fish as well. So, hope you enjoyed that. And if you enjoy the videos, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.